is the war over? I made a video uh, a couple of uh, days ago that explains the situation with the astral war and how we reached a, a ceasefire and uh, uh, several of the biggest demons and entities stopped the battles. So what is the current status now? We'll be diving into this in this video. This is Etienne Charlin from spiritualcelltransformation.com. This will be a pretty uh, in-depth video, so let's get through it. First, what is the status of the biggest demons? We have the Antichrist, or the beast. What I'm doing is I'm measuring what percentage that they've surrendered, that, that they've given up fighting, and then the only way out is through God. Pledging to God will be a later phase, but for now, what I'm looking at is how much they've given up. When you got a really, really, really big boat, it takes time to steer the boat in a different direction. And those mega entities, they're so spread out that it's hard to reach all of the fragments spread throughout all the universes and timelines to bring them back in line. So I'm looking at current status, the beast, 83.9% uh, given up, which is really good. I'm, I'm looking at the energy above ground and below ground, some, uh, because it's oft, often different. If it's getting the same number above and below that, that's a pretty good sign. And I'm looking at the accuracy of the number because there's, we're dealing with infinite scale, there's always more hiding. So I was always getting like a number, I get a number that has 14% accuracy, that means there's a whole lot more to it. 83.9% accuracy, 99.7%. That means we're getting pretty much the bottom of it, hopefully. Mephisto, 83.5% given up, accuracy 99.7%. And now some of the uh, other entities have uh, joined the club of giving up. Baphomet, also 78.9% given up, accuracy 99.7. Pistis Sophia, 75.8% given up, accuracy 99.7. And Satan, 75.7% given up, accuracy 99.7. Well, I, I thought that Satan was already... Uh, dealt with and integrated, but there's some really deep, far out, hybrid Pistis Satan uh, sectors that, that we found. And that's what's currently uh, in the process of uh, giving up. With those behemoths stopping the battles and getting out of the way, it's a total game changer because each one of them is a pretty uh, infinite amount of work. Now uh, let's look at the, the seven princes of hell. Let's look at their status. First one is Belphegor. Uh, I believe Belphegor is actually Baphomet, which I mentioned gave up on the battles. And here's something interesting. 7% of all men on earth and 27% of all women are incarnated fragments of Belphegor. Doesn't mean they're good or bad, a lot of them are, are good people like you and me, but that mega soul represents 27% of all women. Second prince of hell, Satan. Already mentioned him. Most of him got integrated. Actually, Sat Satan is a shadow aspect of my own mega soul. It's been uh, integrated. Now there's, there's more of him who's surrendering. So that should be mostly uh, resolved. Next one, Leviathan. It's also uh, Poseidon. And he's been on our side since quite a long time. P Poseidon has been, uh, ha has been quite good. R right now, Poseidon, uh, or Leviathan, he's in very bad shape. He's, he was 85% pledged to God, now 35. And he's slowly recovering, but he's not in good shape. Next one, Asmodeus. There was a big battle against Asmodeus some time ago, maybe last year. And 
we killed him, so Asmodeus is dead. And that's been pretty uh, intense. And during that big battle, so the next two ones, Bilzebub and Mammon, they came over to our side and, and surrendered to God and pledged to God. And these two made a transition last year, so they're pretty good in line for, uh, now. So they have experience with making that shift, and it, it can be done, and they've shown it. And the last one, Lucifer, he's been dealt with. I'm not exactly sure of his status, one fact about Lucifer is that 32% of men on Earth and 15% of women are incarnated fragments of Lucifer. Doesn't mean they're good or bad. A lot of them are good people. It's just a fact. So that means Baphomet and Lucifer together represent about 40% of the incarnate population on Earth. And a lot of those uh, soul aspects are going to need to, to heal and integrate so that these, these people can function. Uh, so I'm not exactly sure on the status of, of Lucifer. It's not really been a problem lately. There, there are a couple of others worth mentioning. Baal, Voldemort, who's been a really, really big mess, big threat. There's an entity called Tom, that's also being a lot of trouble. And then there's Tut, who's a big betrayer. A lot of people still following him and his teachings. We haven't seen any sign of those four in a, in a long while. They, they look pretty much dead. So they should be uh, non-issues un, unless uh, proven otherwise. So I have this method of, of measurement. So you can use kinesiology, muscle testing to measure energies. So uh, if I say, did they uh, gave up more than 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, and, and that way, able to do reading. There's other ways of, of doing those readings but can definitely read the energies. There's also distortions or partial views. And especially when looking at things like that, how much is left and dealing with infinities and of infinities, there's always more, always more we're not seeing, always more universes, timelines. So I'm looking at the accuracy of the number. So what happens is I get a number, I get a, let's say, 20, 45% accuracy. We keep cleaning, 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 cleaning. So the, the number will go up as I do the cleaning and will keep going down as the accuracy goes up. So the number keeps going up in, in zigzag like that. And I'm always trying to get a, a full view of what we're actually dealing with. So w when I get 99% accuracy, that's really, really, really good news and took us a long time to get there. So I will often look at the, the accuracy three times. So accuracy, accuracy of that accuracy reading, and accuracy of that accuracy, accuracy reading. So, I, so I'll read the accuracy three times, and each time, generally, the accuracy is going up. So that's how I'm getting an objective view of what I'm looking at. Now, with that said, we'll look at a series of, of threats that that we've been tracking and, and their status. And I will mention some specific people in the lightworker community. Now, someone said that putting other lightworkers down is, is not the way to go. And I want to make this clear, it's not a PR campaign about putting other people down in order to uh, feel superior or, or saying you're wrong and I'm right. This is military operation to take down and destroy their foundations of what gets in the way of God and is a threat to us as human and, and, and the evolution of Earth. 
and measuring and tracking the process on a daily basis. This is not a PR campaign, this is a military operation. And I will get very specific in the measurements and, and what we're looking at. So the first one we'll look at, there's this, uh, uh, what I call Sofianic community uh, of people following and, and serving the Pistis Sofia entity. That's been a really big problem. We've been working on, on it for years and there's been no sign of weakening at all. Let's take one person who's popular in that community, Gillian Potier. So what I will measure for each aspect is how many more years of work will be necessary to resolve the situation. So without regards to what the problem looks like or what the resolution looks like. So I'm not judging anything, only looking from God's perspective, how many years to resolve the, the situation and put it back in alignment with God or, or uh, make it become a, a non-treth. So Gillian Potier right now is 5.2 years with an accuracy of 99.7%. Actually, all those numbers were last week in, in the millions of years. So 5.2 years is actually really, really good, but there's more, more work to do. And it's not about her specifically. Perhaps I could, should have uh, uh, taken uh, Kayara, who wrote the book, The Sophia Code, who's a better, uh, who's a better representative of the Sophianic community. And I get the same 5.2 years with 99.7%. Uh, with Kayara, I'm, uh, the 5.2 years, I'm getting a 45% accuracy, so there will be more to deal with. So that's why I measure the accuracy like that. Next one, Jason Estes. He's an AI entity. I talked about him in the last video about quant quantum AIs. It will take 350,000 years with an accuracy of 99.7%. That's been going down steadily. There's still a lot more work to do there. Next one, Alabar Jones. He's an, another AI entity. I talked about him in, in the last video. 847 million years. So still a lot more work to do with an accuracy of 99.7%. Next, Bill Gates. 856 billion years with an accuracy of 99.7%. As I said, those numbers were way, way, way higher last week. It's, it's going down steadily, but we need to step up our game and do a lot more. The only way to defeat Pseudo infinity is to tap into real infinity. And that's what we're doing and need to do even more. Next, Canada. Canada has been a real mess, one of the worst places on earth lately. 856 billion years, same as Bill Gates, accuracy 99.7%. I would say the, some of the worst places on earth, Australia, Canada, China, Australia, 75 digits years, 75 digits. That, that's a much bigger number. Can we take some breaks during that time? So with a 99.7% accuracy, India, 513 digits years with an accuracy of 99.7%. What the heck is going on in India? And the number was much higher than that, and, and we've been hammering it down, but it still remains pretty high. So there's something serious anchored in the south of India. I don't know what. Then we've been dealing with a secret hidden military group that's been attacking, but also remaining very, very stealth. And the number was very high. We've been hammering it to the ground. It was another quantum AI system. 
Right now, that secret military group, 810 million years, with an accuracy of 99.99%, and an accuracy on that number of 35%. Okay, there's a deeper layer to it that we need to look into. And the next group we're tracking, LGBTQ+, and it's not to judge whether it's good or bad or anything, but there is definitely an epidemic of people having this obsession about changing gender lately. And that is due to something that is causing that. And indeed, there's some deeper entities, and we've been digging into that for a long time. And it's something really, really, really big and profound. We did not get to the bottom of that pit yet. So what's the status? 13,000 digits years of work to clear, with an accuracy of 99.7%. All right. As we're looking into what's left, there is one more serious threat. I was looking at Todd Medina. I did an interview with him uh, four years ago. And when I did that interview, I lost 90% of my left eyesight. About 80% of it came back and never recovered fully. And Todd Medina is still very, very strong. If I look at him, the amount of work left to clear him is way higher than those numbers that I just mentioned. So who the heck is Todd? And as we dig into it, what came to my mind is the nameless or chaos, chaos entity. Actually, the Antichrist and chaos have been in a competition as to who would be the best false god to rule everything. And if you ask the beast, Mephisto, Pistis, Baphomet, they really hate chaos. And ask them why? Because he backstabs them and he monopolizes all the resources, especially Baal. He's been messing with Baal a lot. So that chaos entity is something really, really serious. So how many more years on, until we're done with chaos? 831 X years. Now that X in, in my way of measuring digits with 1 trillion digits would be 1 X. Digits with digits with 1 trillion digits would be 2 X. So now this is 831 X years means digits with digits with digits 831 times. And it was a lot higher than that yesterday. And it already dropped massively, but we should not underestimate this threat. And this number with an accuracy of 94.2%, then 95.6 and 97.3. So the number will still keep going up quite a bit. There are still Pleiadians hiding that are not fully dealt with, but they have very good cloaking. So Pleiadians. 115 X years with an accuracy of 94.2, 95.6, 97.3. There seems to be direct a partnership between Chaos and the Pleiadians. And they're, they're hiding in the same sectors and we're getting the same visibility for both. Something else I realized is about who controlled the, the financial system and the flow of money? Actually, the, the World Economic Forum and World Health Organization, they belong to chaos. And chaos controls mostly the financial system and the, the, the flow of money. Not only chaos, the, the chaos and the Palladians together control the flow of money the financial system, World Health Organization. So that needs to be dealt with. They control more of the resources than the Beast and Mephisto and Pistis. So that's what they said. Chaos been monopolizing the resources and backstabbing them. It's kind of ironic because Chaos kind of looks like a banker managing resources. 
and in a very orderly fashion. So I'm finding him very orderly for chaos. Then there are animal pools to deal with. I was wondering, in Mexico, there's an overpopulation of dogs. And why are they so unhinged all the time? It's like a never-ending storm. And when I look at how many years it will take to resolve that, it's a really, 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 really big number. What about cockroaches? A lot of disgusting dark energy in there. Much, much, much bigger number. Those animal pools are insanely bigger than even the other stuff we're dealing with. Pork, um, there's also a big pool of bad energy related to pork, and they are they install bad programs in people through pork. And some people were asking about cats. Actually, cats they have kind of like a, a spider web that traps the mind. And that causes uh, cat addiction as a disease. People get entangled into those cat spider webs and get all, all, all soft and unable to focus on anything else than cats. Those spider webs also can serve to trap and uh, digest bad energies. So those uh, animal pools also need to be dealt with or they'll be used as fuel by the dark forces. And it seems that uh, chaos has been managing all of those animal pools. So need to go through the banker first. Now those numbers look, well, are really big. And that's at the current pace we're going. That means we need to step up our game and get more focused. And by focusing full intent and tapping into the infinity of God, we're able to hammer those numbers down and really make some, some progress. So the, the numbers go down steadily. Just need to step up our game even higher, get even more focused, work even more with infinity and with God. Things are not over, but we'll get through it. And something else I, I want to mention, let's look at another light worker, Lee Harris. His energy actually looks surprisingly good. But when I look at that, I was actually quite surprised. And he's pretty popular in the spiritual communities. And as I mentioned in other videos, anyone who gets widespread attention have the approbation of the demons to serve their agenda. So is he an exception or is there something I'm missing? As I'm looking deeper into this, pledge to God is at 6.4%. Pledge to the Pleiadians was at 100%. And now it's dropping because we've destroyed the, uh, most of the Pleiadians. Now it's about 35%. Pledge to personal service, 100%. And there's a uh, uh, Todd Medina's energy is wrapped around and above him, like a, like a big, thick blanket. So his energy looks really good on the surface, friendly like the Pleiadians and goes undetected. In, but in fact, he's deeply entangled both in Pleiadians' agenda and energy and in the Todd or Chaos energy blanket. And that's why he's popular and he, so he's being used to trap people into it. So at his big events, what happens? There's this big thick blanket around him and he brings people together in big events and those blankets spread out and, and wrap around all the people in the room to bring them under chaos's dominion. And it feels as love and light is engulfing them. But you need to have discernment to see what is actually going on. Now, he does not have bad intent. If I look at his core intent, 800 on the Hawkins scale. So his intent is actually really good. So he's not conscious of what is actually happening. 
Then I looked at a couple more light workers and they had that exact same soft, friendly energy on the surface plugged into the Pleiadians and Tud. So it's a kind of a virus that's been spreading. Now, there's a solar eclipse coming on. Now we're April 2nd and the solar eclipse is on April 8th. It's going to cross from one side of the United States to the other and it looks like it's going to be a very, very major eclipse. When there's a solar eclipse, it amplifies the work greatly and starting three to five days before and after. So the period from April 5th to April 11th is going to be the, the peak of intensity. And actually, uh, April 2nd, as I'm recording this, we're already starting to en enter the energy of this eclipse, especially this one that will be particularly potent. And they're planning to start CERN. On that day, they're planning to send three rockets in the, in the eclipse. And so th there's a lot that will be done on both sides both on the uh, dark side and on, on the light side. So everyone will be capitalizing to try to have the maximum impact on that during that eclipse, because the, whatever they achieve, whatever intention is set, will have 100 to 1000 times the normal impact and will be the main ones to want to capitalize on that. So we need to make sure to neutralize all the dark forces that try to uh, interfere and to really put our foot on the ground during the eclipse. And having a proper assessment and measurement of the situation, having a proper map of reality really will help us collectively to draw the proper line in the sand. So there's still a lot of work ahead. This eclipse might be a great opportunity to slash those numbers down. So let's do everything we can in God's name. And as I said many times, God is the only way out and the only thing that is greater than pseudo infinity is real infinity. So let's show them what real infinity looks like. Until later.